Hey everybody, welcome back to Flying Miata. This is Kyle. Today on episode four, we are continuing work on our 2018 V8 conversion. Where we had left off is we had stripped the subframes bare, and now we are gonna modify them to be able to hold the new driveline. We have our front subframe here. So laid out, you see the pieces that we're gonna to add to the front subframe. We have the motor mount inner and outer tubes. We have the new steering rack mounts and we have the new sway bar mounts. Each of these pieces accommodates fitting the LS engine onto the factory subframe. All right, first up is trimming these gussets here to make room for our new motor mount towers. We will have to cut off the rack mounts for the original rack as it would get in the way. We also trim a relief on the end of this extension tube which gives us room for our steering column. We will grind everything nice and smooth. We'll take off some paint in the areas where we need to weld so we have a nice clean welding surface. Next up is our sway bar brackets. They bolt in to location and swing over. We'll tack those into place and everything will be test fit at a later time. Now we'll go ahead and mount up the jig and stake where we need to drill our holes for our new motor mount inner tubes. We'll remove the jig and drill out those holes. Once the holes are drilled from the top and the bottom, we will go ahead and test fit the tubes. And once we're satisfied, we'll go ahead and rejig everything, bolt those tubes to the jig, make sure they're at the proper angle, and we will go ahead and tack weld them from the bottom to locate them properly. At this point, we'll also go ahead and tack weld the rack mounts top and bottom, also using the jig. Now that the inner tubes are located and tack welded into place, we can fit the outer tubes and tack weld those in as well. Everything on the front is only tacked into place for now. We want to go ahead and test fit the engine and all the other components like the rack and the sway bar. Make sure that everything fits just right. The tolerances on the front end are very snug. So anything out of place just by a small amount means it's probably going to be in contact with something. So we want to verify everything is just right before we fully weld and paint the subframe. All right, and here is the finished product. Now we're on to the rear subframe. We're going to go ahead and start with a bare subframe and we're going to lay out our pieces that we're going to be adding to it and we're going to go ahead and cut off a few pieces that are going to be in the way. We'll go ahead and do some welding prep in the areas where we know we're going to be adding material. 
Similar to the front, we're going to bolt in the jig that's going to locate all of our pieces. We'll go ahead and weld on the front crossbar, and then we will weld on the rear mounting plates. These will be fully welded on, as there's no need to test fit, as there's plenty of clearance on these items. And now we have our finished rear subframe, fully welded, primed, and painted. Now that our front subframe is done, we wanted to show you what went into our engine mount towers. In this case, we're using Corvette motor mounts. They're well engineered, they're easy to find, and they're perfectly suited for our application. You can see they mount with a stud on the lower end here. And we needed a way to be able to get a nut onto that stud to hold everything into place. And that's where the design of our uh, towers came from. So Eric will lift this up for me. You can see there's also a dowel. That will locate into the hole here. So everything will drop into place. And that inner tube we referenced earlier is poking through the bottom of the subframe. It is perfectly sized for us to be able to stick the nut and an 18 millimeter socket into place and tighten that motor mount down, nice and snug. One of the major obstacles we had to overcome was the steering. There is no way we could make the Mazda steering rack work. Its electric goiter that hangs off the front just wouldn't work with the large engine that hangs lower and sticks further forward than the original four cylinder unit. So we had to come up with a different solution. and. That solution is this rack right here. This rack comes out of a fifth gen Camaro. It works really well for us because the transfer tubes hang low and adapt into the front, which gives us a nice clearance for our crank pulley and the very front edge of our oil pan. We did have to overcome a few obstacles. As you already have seen, we have relocated the rack forward and down of the original location. That introduced a little bit of bump steer into the system, which we remedied by making this adaptive collar. This is the adaptive collar that the tie rod end bolts to into the knuckle. This is our new one, and this makes the tie rod sit at a lower angle that matches the control arm and reduces our bump steer. We actually have better bump steer numbers with this setup than the factory car does. Another obstacle we had to overcome was the column input, the U-joint here. The Mazda unit was splined. This one has a D-shaped relief. So we use this universal adapter and we use the very top end of the Mazda unit. It was cut off. It was ground to fit within the D-shaped relief on this end, fully welded, and we have added a relief here to give it a full lock-in and as mentioned earlier we had to just give it a slight relief here for adequate clearance but with those few minor steps we have a really great feeling steering system hey everybody thanks for watching hope you enjoyed what you saw stay tuned in our next episode we're going to go over our custom v8 exhaust see you then